from Nifty Baltimore, let's give a round of applause and welcome Lily DeBell from Lily Leg Warmers. Good evening. I'm Lily DeBell, CEO and founder of Lily's Leg Warmers. We are always on point. A dancer dies twice, said Martha Graham, once when they stop dancing, and this first death is the more terrible. But in a sport where you are more likely to get hurt than a rugby player, this first death is often due to injury. Dancers need their feet and ankles, but 53% of dance-related injuries occur in these locations. Dancers wear leg warmers to warm up the muscles in their lower legs, feet, and ankles. Increased warmth in those areas means more flexibility, and more flexibility means a lower risk of injury. Leg warmers in the market are made of a synthetic fiber, acrylic yarn. Acrylic yarn is not breathable and will not act as an insulator unless you are warm already. These leg warmers are bland, lack options for customization, and are not suited to the needs and wants of dancers. My business, Lily's Leg Warmers, provides dancers with the highest quality leg warmers, suited to their athletic and style needs. Our leg warmers are made of natural materials, wool and alpaca, that trap and release heat in an organic way that warms up muscles better than acrylic fibers. Our leg warmers can be customized in length, monogram, colors, and embroidered, and embroidered design. The mission of Lily's Leg Warmers is to provide dancers with high quality leg warmers made of natural materials to help lower dancers' risk of injury. Lily's Leg Warmers is a socially responsible business. We use natural materials, which are biodegradable and come from sustainable sources. Baltimore has a 10% unemployment rate, so bolstering the city's economy is very important. I hire locally, which supports Baltimore's economy. I am aiming to hire seniors. Since Lily's leg warmers are currently handmade, with knitting and a hand-operated loom, and knitting is a skill many senior citizens possess. My customers feel good about purchasing from a business that helps support the elderly community. Lily's leg warmers are designed to meet the particular athletic needs of dancers, providing a unique combination of fit and fashion. Our leg warmers are soft, breathable, and comfortable. And since you can customize them with your own colors, monogram, and embroidered design, they're just as pretty as they are practical. We have been reviewed by several ballerinas, including Mia Eventoff, who dances at the Baltimore School for the Arts. She says, they are so soft and comfortable. They are a perfect fit on me. The stitches are very neat, and I really like the colors. I am going to wear them a lot. This business has two different definitions of one unit. The first definition is one pair of customized leg warmers, which cost $32. The variable expenses are materials, labor, Etsy tax, and packaging, which total $13.72, leaving me with a contribution margin of $18.28. I would like to take a moment to describe my production process, so you can have a better understanding of these expenses. When an order is placed, we begin manufacturing it, which takes about one hour. The product is checked for defects, packaged, and mailed. You will receive your leg warmers in no longer than two weeks, and usually sooner. The second definition of one unit is one pair of stock leg warmers, which cost $22. The variable expenses are of the same type as for the customized pair, and total $5.34, leaving a contribution margin of $16.66. The monthly fixed expenses for this business are website fees, advertising and promotion, credit card fees, general liability insurance, phone and internet fees, and salaries, which total $190. When you divide $190 by the average of my two contribution margins, you find that my monthly break-even units is 11 units. The industry for this product is the sports apparel industry, which grosses about $68 billion annually. Within this industry's target market, I am targeting female dancers between the ages of 5 and 25. I am primarily focusing on those ages 5 to 18, since they make up much of the dance community, but I am also targeting those ages 18 to 25. I, there are about 15 million dancers living in the U.S. Since I can't reach all those people initially, I am mainly targeting those living in Baltimore City and Baltimore County, Maryland. There are about 70,000 dancers living in those areas, and based on a survey and focus group I conducted, 80% of those dancers would be interested in purchasing my product. I plan to promote my product in a variety of ways. One such way is to promote my product through dance studios, 
where I would leave promotional materials and sell in person occasionally. I currently promote my product through Etsy and have a loyal customer following. In September alone, I sold 12 units. I also promote my product through social media with an active Tumblr and am in the process of developing other social media. My products are currently being endorsed by two professional dancers, Rebecca Husenacht and Paula Levere. Ms. Husenacht was featured in a dance documentary called First Position and is pictured in the lower right corner of this slide. Ms. Levere runs a dance charity in Baltimore called Dance Happens. Both dancers have written testimonials for my product and have helped me improve my design. I have four major competitors, Grishko, Capizio, Eurotard, and Katie Dance. My main competitor is Grishko, since they also produce leg warmers made of natural materials, silk and cotton. Grishko's fibers, however, are not breathable, not naturally flame retardant, and fade more quickly than wool or alpaca. Lily's leg warmers are customizable and cater to the individuality valued by many young women, our target demographic. What makes me qualified to run this business? Well, in addition to five years of knitting experience, I successfully completed the Nifty course, which gave me valuable information about the business world. I also finished in the top five in the elevator pitch competition. My product is currently on the market with sales, and I'm a student in the Ingenuity Project. I'm in the eighth grade. It's a math and science program that has given me the math skills I need to run the numbers for my business. All these, all these accomplishments have given me the skills I need to think critically about different parts of my business and have made me determined to succeed. In the first year, I project to sell 480 units for a gross profit of $12,960 and a net profit of $5,130. I project to sell year round with an increase in my sales during the holiday, summer camp, and back to school seasons. To start this business, I need to purchase yarn, shipping materials, bookkeeping software, and an iron. In addition, I need to register my business. I have already invested my winnings from, reg from regionals into a knitting loom, knitting needles, business cards, and promotional flyers. These expenses come to $1,057 total. And when combined with my emergency fund and funds reserved for fixed expenses, my total startup expenditures are $1,707, leaving me with a return on investment of 300% and a return on sales of 40%. In the future, I would like to expand Lily's Leg Warmers to Howard and Montgomery counties in Maryland, where numerous target customers reside. I would like to hire more labor to meet market demand and to build a brand with five to 18 year olds, since younger dancers are more open to new brands. By year three, when I will be a junior in high school, I would like to expand our products to include dance sweaters and other knit dance apparel. I'm very excited about the future of this business. I'm Lily DeBell. Thank you for considering Lily's Leg Warmers today. Judges, you have six minutes beginning now. Take it away. Hi, thank you for a very entertaining presentation. Thank uh, you. My question for you is around thinking of what the competitive advantages would be for your leg warmers, which were very soft. Um, thank you. How did you determine what the most appropriate competitive advantages would be for you to gain market share? Well, based on my experience with the past products, uh, my sisters used several and none of them have really worked for her. I compared my product to theirs uh, using the uh, monetary value of it as well as the special features I offer and that's how I determined my competitive advantages. So, uh, nice job. Thank Lily. you. Um, I just can't help but know that you know, you're involved in knitting this. So, what about kind of just scale and kind of production? So how? How do you envision that as you think about your plan and uh, bringing on more folks to help you with that? Of course. So um, my products are currently handmade because going to large scale manufacturing uh, isn't really um, affordable for my business right now. So I'm primarily focusing on hiring other people to help me with production. Um, seniors have lots of experience with knitting, especially since they've been doing it for you know a long time. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are really very fast with it. So that's going to be a big step forward in uh, producing my product and making it more scalable. Thank you. Good. Hmm. 
So I think it's a great idea that you're working with seniors to um, create these because, like you said, they have a lot of experience, but two, they can customize them in a much more efficient manner. Um, my question is, how much do you normally pay them, and, and um, how do you find them? Right. So um, as to how I pay them, I have based the cost on how long it's, take, it's taken me to produce them. I have a knitting loom, and it takes me 15 minutes to make a stock pair, and it takes me about an hour to make a customized pair because there's the added time for embroidery. Um, I'm finding seniors. There are about 28 uh, senior centers in and around Maryland, and I'm focusing on building a bridge with five of them to find people within those centers who are able to knit. Quick question, great presentation. Thank you. How many people do you need to hire this year to hit your goals, if any? And when would you anticipate needing to hire um, folks, if not this year? Right. So this year, I anticipate probably needing to take on four or five more people. I've already had three people say they would be willing to work for me. And I am really, right after the competition, uh, about two weeks later, I'm really going to start hiring people because I think demand will be increased after the great exposure Nifty has given me. I like it. <laughs> that was a fantastic presentation. And again, I love just the genuine passion that you have around building your product. You're Thank both you so a dancer much. and a knitter. Uh, and I have a daughter that's exactly in those buckets. She's a dancer and a knitter. One of the things that you said at the beginning was that the leg warmers you'd produce would reduce the risk of injury, and I wondered a little bit about how you figured that out and how it compares, yarn compares with acrylic and other synthetic fabrics. Right, okay, so actually fun fact, not a dancer, but my younger sister is, and she's been injured several times, so she came to me and she's like, you know, we really need to work on this because I can't dance, you know, and she's used different leg warmers, and. So she tried them out, and they worked for her, and I've done uh, several focus groups, and I also had professional dancers use them, and that's how I've uh, begun to do my research into how much wool uh, benefits that. And I also did some research using studies from different universities and different medical journals. 